Welcome to Hope Today. It is a week of hope. It is Holy Week where we celebrate the passion of Jesus Christ and his death, his burial, his resurrection, all that. And uh, we are gearing up towards that. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amanda Brocker. Amanda, you're going to be sharing with us. Tell us a little bit. I am. You know, I was just thinking about, you know, this Easter, sitting at the dinner table with the family and being able to have a conversation about Jesus and really solidifying our faith, building a strong foundation so that way as we share with others, it's going to make them think and they're going to ponder Jesus as the Passover lamb. That's right. Absolutely. Important discussion That's for us right. to have and important for us to think about. Oh, in just a little bit, we're going to have a conversation with uh, Dr. Brad Harab. I had a chance to talk to him earlier. He is going to share with us about truth and what does truth mean and what do we say to someone and probably maybe relative to yours you might see at Easter time. What do you say to someone who doesn't even accept the concept of truth? They have their own truth. Well, there's a lot there and uh, you know, we just want to uh, invite you to be part of that. Uh, stay with us for that. That's right. And we also want to invite you to invite others to Easter service. If you know where you're going, then please reach out to those that God would lay on your heart and invite them to go. A lot of times people will say yes just because it's Easter. Yeah, you know, I, I've, <laughs> I've spent a lot of my life talking about how to share the gospel and how to how to lead someone to Christ and have done a lot of evangelism myself. But you know, one of the greatest ways to evangelize, if you want to call it that, is to just invite someone to church with you. Just bring them along. So many people that I, when I ask, if I'm teaching on a Wednesday night or something, I ask that, I say, how did you come to Christ? Well, almost at least three quarters of the people that respond Someone just invited them to church and they came and they heard the gospel, maybe for the first time or maybe for the hundredth time, but whatever time it was, they finally responded to it and uh, finally came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Amen. So it is time. And today, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then we want you to know him. It is the most important relationship that you can possibly have. We have prayer partners standing by. You can give us a call, but I would listen to the content of this program before you call. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So We've got several things going on here today. We're going to have this great conversation in just a moment with Dr. Brad Harab. You're going to want to hear that. Uh, we are also going to be sharing uh, with you. Amanda's going to bring a word about, uh, you know, the Passover lamb and what that all means for us as Christians today. And then we're going to be praying just for you. We'll be right back. Discover what God's Word has to say about healing and deliverance. Best-selling author John Eckhart makes topical Bible study easy with his new book, Scriptures for Faith, Deliverance, and Healing. This handy reference is for those who want to have a greater understanding of healing and deliverance to incorporate God's Word into their prayers. Eckhart also includes targeted commentary to highlight key scriptures and life application. His spirit-filled perspective will enhance your time in God's Word and encourages the spiritual disciplines of memorization and meditation. Request scriptures for faith, deliverance, and healing as our thank you gift when you support Cornerstone Television this month. Request your copy today. If you want to strengthen the ministry of CTVN, share your best gift by visiting us online at ctvn.org donate or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for your partnership. Hope happens here. Our next guest currently serves as the executive director of Focus Press and co-editor of Think Magazine. Dr. Brad Harab travels the world speaking on Christian evidences, fortifying the family, and cultural apologetics. Dr. Brad, welcome to Hope hey, Today. It's great to be here, Tom. Well, let me ask you, what do you see, uh, talking about apologetics, about defense of the faith, what, what areas right now in our society now are we really needing to give an answer to people that ask? I, I would say probably just truth. You know, where does truth come from? If you were to ask somebody on the street, hey, what is truth and where does it come from? A, a lot of times you're going to get people talking about emotion or coming from the heart or feelings. They don't realize that truth comes ultimately from God's Word, John 17, 17. Without having an absolute foundation in truth, 
then basically everybody kind of has their own version of the truth. And I think that's kind of where our culture is today. Well, that's what you hear all the time. My truth, your truth, exactly. all that kind of, it always grates on me, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. You it's, know, it's like, well, yeah, but what about the truth? Absolutely. And, and so let me ask you, um, you know, we have a society now that it seems to have shifted from the base of, of even believing that there is truth. Where do you start with a, a person like that? Where do you start with a society like that? So to me, you know, we, I kind of look at, at Paul's example when he was talking to the scholars at Areopagus. Um, basically, you have to establish the fact that there is a God, one God, yeah. and then that the word is his, or that the Bible is his word, that it is inspired. Because if, if you don't get those two things clearly, firmly established, then all you're going to be doing is butting heads, sharing opinions, um, maybe even allowing their emotion to, to get into the, the debate. If you establish the fact that, hey, there is a God, here's what he expects, here's what he wants, here's his will, then all of a sudden things become a lot more black and white. And we have an ally called the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> because we can't argue someone into the kingdom of God. No, it's got to no. be the, the drawing of the Holy Spirit. We, you know, and what I do is I, I try to give a defense. First Peter three fifteen. Right. Um, there is a spiritual war going on, and I think we're seeing in our culture today. I think it's it's really getting bigger and bigger. I think there's lots and lots of of attacks, especially. In our colleges, universities, young people are just getting bombarded and we need to arm them. We need to give them the tools to where they can accurately and adequately defend the faith. And then a, a couple of generations ago, there would have been this undercurrent of Christianity. Uh, as, yes. as, even yeah. if people weren't Christians or were far away from God, there would be like a respect for the Bible. Uh, That's this right. un, and that, is, that seems to have just been taken completely away. So you have to really back up a lot, don't you? And start Absolutely. from square zero. If, if you had gone and, and knocked on 10 doors in your neighborhood 30, 40 years ago, Probably eight of those folks would, would say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm a believer. I believe in God. And most of those would even go so far as say, yeah, I believe Jesus is his son. Today, if you knocked on 10 doors, first off, you, you better be wearing bulletproof vest or something. <laughs> but if you knocked on 10 doors, you might be lucky to get two or three who would openly admit, hey, yeah, I believe in God. And of those two or three, probably only one who's ready to really defend and, and take a stand for things. Yeah, let me uh, ask you about uh, another angle on something that you, we've talked about yeah, that you yeah. do, because there's so many ways God, God has a, a key, I think, for every heart, but God is using coffee. Tell me yes, about coffee yes. and, and your ministry. So my wife and I opened a coffee shop um, in Columbia, Tennessee, Co Cabin Coffee. And we are using that as a ministry to people, as a, an outreach, a, a tool for evangelism. At the end of the day, people will study the Bible. They, they will pray or allow you to pray for them in a coffee shop where they may never, you, you've done some, some street evangelism. And you know, the immediate defense often is kind of they build, people will build a yeah, wall. For sure. Walking into that coffee shop, I think the wall actually comes down and they're a lot more receptive to talking about God, talking about scriptures, that kind of thing. Is it a chemical reaction? <laughs> I mean, Believe it or not. So I, I, there, there has been research done that the aroma, the smell um, does actually do something neurologically. Well, it does something to me, that's I, for sure. <laughs> I, I can completely attest to that. And, and we ro roast on site, so <laughs> man, we're really, really putting it kind of on steroids, so to speak. But that, that really is, uh, it's, it's kind of a cool thing that God does in getting past defenses. Look, the preaching of the gospel is preeminent, but to, to get through that wall like you talked absolutely, about. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll give you a real quick example. A lady came up to the, the counter and I greeted her like I do most people, said, hey, how are you doing today? And I could tell instantly she was not having a good day and she just kind of looked at me and she said, I'm fine. And I looked at her and I paused and I said, how are you really doing? 
And she said, I'm not doing real good. And she went on to share how they had had to put their dog down that they'd had for oh, wow. so long. Yeah. And, and I, I stopped her and I said, would you mind if I pray for you? And you would have thought I gave her $1,000 at the counter. She, she wasn't expecting it. It was something that really, really spoke to her heart. And so we use opportunities like that to really try and reach people and, and take that wall down. Yeah, I think that that's a fantastic uh, lesson for us all to remember that that kind of op that that moment of love that we can show absolutely really makes a difference. Dr. Brad, thank you so much for all that you do. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you. Yeah, well, we'll be right back with uh, more of the program right after this. Are you tired of just getting bills in your mailbox? Find inspiration instead by subscribing to the Cornerstone Television's Hope Today newsletter. Each month, we'll deliver good news about what God is doing in our region and world through CTVN's ministry. We'll keep you in the know about our latest special programming, and our full program guide will keep you connected to all your favorites. You'll also find a new Dashing Dish recipe every month. As you read our Hope Today newsletter, stay encouraged knowing your generosity and giving to CTVN is making a difference and building God's kingdom. We can't do it without you. Sign up today to receive your inspirational free Hope Today newsletter every month in your mailbox. Go to our website at ctvn.org news or call us at 888-665-4483. Thank you for being a part of our Cornerstone Television family. Hope happens here. Well, what are you waiting for? Call that number and get your, your newsletter. Uh, you know, you need to have this. It has got just chock full of great information about the station. We've got all the specials on here. We've got the, the whole schedule is on here and the highlights. And it's got some, uh, it's got some, well, there's a pretty good article by Tom Hollis in here uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and some other people as well. And there's even recipes on the back. You've got to, to get it. It'll keep you in touch with what's going on at the ministry here, what's going on with Cornerstone Television and Hope Today. And I would encourage you to call the 800 number and ask for your free newsletter. It is a great thing to have. And we, we just want to share with you. I've got a scripture I want to share with you. And then Amanda's going to share a little bit about uh, what God's laid on her heart. But first, listen to this. 1 Peter 3.15. This is in the New Living Translation. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks you about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. I love this, Amanda, because it's not, I don't have to explain anything about my feelings. I don't have to explain, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in a, like a collegiate way or anything. I just need to explain the hope that is within me. And uh, God gives us the ability to do that. That's right. I'm just thinking about, you know, he talked about, well, taking them to the coffee house, you know, sitting across the yeah, table. Dr. Brad did that. Yes, yeah. with someone. And I really do believe like the defenses come down. You don't want to throw pearl before swine. Like pearl means this God good news that we have to give. And like we need to work with the Holy Spirit. And I know you had mentioned, you know, unless the Holy Spirit draws them, they're, they're not going to be coming. We might want them to. And I, I feel that oftentimes we can jam the word down someone's throat. We want them to be free more than they want to be free. We want them saved more than they want to be saved. So we have to have some patience with our family and loved ones as the Holy Spirit woos them and work with the Lord. I, I just think that that is a gift he's given us to discern that where a person is and when they're ready and then let our mouth open when it's supposed to. I know this because I did this in my own household and God's word works and he can, um, we can trust him with our most cared possessions, which are the people that sit at our table. But I was just thinking about Easter, you know, you're going to have your family around the table. And these are just some spiritual truths that I have learned from God's word that I think would be awesome for you to be able to share with your family. And uh, 
Just as it says in John 17, 17 that Dr. Brad referred to, that God's word is the truth. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today, that you'll have these tools to even give to your family. I don't know if you've ever looked up in on the computer. It's a plant called hyssop, H-Y-S-S-O-P but it's used in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And I love how the imagery, you know, so that we can fully see God was so intentional with every scripture in our Bible. And if we look at Exodus 12, it's the moment where Moses goes to Pharaoh the 10th time and the 10th plague is going to be uh, released upon them. But there were instructions that the Lord gave from Exodus 12 verses 21 and 22. It says, Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go, pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin. Then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of the doorframe of your houses, and no one may go through the door until morning. There's something so significant about this, and my friend Sue Ellen Watt is who brought this to my attention. She loves the Lord, and my eyes just opened. You know, the, the logos, it became rhema. Like, oh, I see it. I got it. So now we're going to go into the New Testament. Go to John 19, and this is verses 28 to 30. It says, Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And y'all, I don't know if you're seeing what I saw, but they used the hyssop that last day of Passover, the last uh, plague before it was being released and those instructions and to dip the blood of the lamb with that hyssop and put it on the door. And then you see Jesus hanging on a cross and they're dipping once again with this hyssop branch and placing it up on the door. The doorway is Jesus. It says in John 10, 9 and 10, yes, I am the gate or the door. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. And I think that it is so important that we reflect on Christ as that doorway as that Passover lamb, Tom, while we sit with our family, that we can see the complete work that Jesus has done. Well, you can see the, the imagery, the symbolism. Uh, now, this was a, a, a real lamb and a, you know, something that really happened in the, the time of the, uh, the Exodus and something God was doing. But there's a symbolism there, isn't there? There's a symbolism that applies to us now and God throughout the, all of scripture is looking forward to the, the pivot point of history. And that's Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection on the cross, what we're gonna be celebrating this weekend. But it all points to that. And so that's the thing is when, when that, uh, Amanda, when they took that bunch of hyssop and they went in and they, they dipped it in the blood and they put it on the doorpost, you know, a, a pastor friend of mine was sharing when he was a young man, he was talking to an old saint of God about you know, recurring sin and battles with sin and feeling condemned. And, and, uh, and the old saint said to him, a minister said to him, young man, if that blood on the doorpost could keep away the death angel, Jesus's blood can forgive your sins and give you the victory in those things. And so we always need to remember that. These, this is a looking forward. It was a real thing that happened or did what they were supposed to do and they were saved at that time. But it's a symbol also looking forward 
to what Christ did for us. That's right. And when you think about, you know, we learn in the New Testament about the rebirth. Yeah. We're to be born again. And when you think of that moment in history when the, the Israelites were held in slavery in Egypt there, this was their moment of being free. And as that angel of death went through, all the firstborn of all the Egyptians died. But the Israelites who had the blood on the door and were within the door, it said, don't come out. So when you find yourself in Christ, don't come out. Don't go wayward. Don't go away from him. Stay within the door of Christ because death, oh, where is your sting? It cannot come near you. But when I think about the Israelites coming out of Egypt, when um, this is another image within the Bible, when the, the waters parted and he made a way for the Israelites to go through the waters to the other side, it was like a rebirthing. Mm -hmm. like the birth canal. I'm like, oh my gosh, the word of God is so full of image for us to see what Jesus has done. And you know, we are just like the Israelite people because they, after seeing this, mm -hmm. they still get on the other side and they're pondering how this happened, why this happened, saying we want to go back. I'm like, oh God, deliver us from our humanity. Mm -hmm. But the reality is we have this wonderful opportunity to place our trust in Jesus, to find ourselves in the doorway that we've gone through and have his covering, his protection over us. And it truly is the miracle of salvation. It is. Isn't it interesting that in that, when the blood was on the doorpost, Certain people were protected, the Israelites, those that put that on there. But there were people that died. Amanda just talked about the firstborn of all the Egyptians died. Not everyone is going to make it. The scripture says that. My question to you is, are you going to be, are you going to be one that makes it? Are you going to be one that put, applies the blood to your heart, to your life? God desires you to do that. He's made a way for all to make it. His, his hands are open to all, but not everyone re responds. The Bible's very clear about that, that not all will respond. But we don't have to worry about that today. All we need to talk about is you and me. Will we respond today? I have responded to the Lord. I need to continue to respond to the Lord. In fact, uh, Amanda, there's a scripture I wanted to share um, that says, uh, you know, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Right. You can see this bringing it around. That's 1 Corinthians 5, uh, this, the, the second half of verse 7. That is where Christ is, uh, the sacrificed lamb for us. So we, you see this is, even though it was something that was real and something they needed to do, it was a type of who Christ was going to be for us, that he was going to take away. What did John say? Behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He didn't say behold the the, the eagle of God, behold the, the, uh, the lion. Of, he didn't say that because Jesus could have been the lion, but then we would die in our sins. No, he was the lamb. He was the one who gave himself up, who died on that cross for us that we can be forgiven. Praise God. Praise God. Look at the humility of Christ, the humility of God to come and offer himself as a lamb for us. It's just amazing, Amanda. Amen. The very first prayer that God instructed the Israelites to pray, it's called the Shema, and it's in Deuteronomy. And it talks about us loving the Lord with our whole self, our mind, our heart, our soul, our strength. But it says to share that word with your children. And I think these moments of conversation, if you bring that into the New Testament, it's in Mark 12, and it's the same thing, that question being asked of what's the uh, most important commandment, and it is loving the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, but loving your neighbor as yourself. So it went from just your family to your neighbor. I think the Lord is desiring for us to have those conversations about his word. I think sometimes we're so, eager to talk about the sports team, March Madness, or you know what the weather is. And sometimes those can be icebreakers, but ultimately the Lord desires for us to talk about his word. And so I encourage you today to maybe pull out a picture of hyssop and just ask anyone at the table, does anybody know what this is? 
and then go into the story of how it was used in Exodus and then how it was used in the New Testament in John. And I believe as you have this conversation and just bringing to light the glory that Jesus has uh, just portrayed, that the eyes of the understanding right within your own household, they will see what they could not see. I know we're going to pray for that for your family here at Cornerstone. We desire to see every member of every household represented to be seated at the table when Jesus returns for us. We don't want anyone missing. So we encourage you today. And as Tom said, if that is you, if that is your heart that is saying, you know, I haven't really decided to follow him. Oh, what a wonderful season to begin following him during this Passover time where we're reflecting on his deliverance of not just the Jewish people from slavery and bondage in Egypt, but from the believers today who find themselves bound with shackles that the enemy has wrapped around them. But as Tom said, the blood of Jesus, is it not enough? Yes, it is. It is enough to break the chains that the enemy has wrapped around you. So there's no addiction that he cannot break. There is no sin that he cannot break. It's what he came was to destroy the works that sin created. And he has that for you today. So surrender your life to him. Make Jesus the Lord in your life and know that he loves you. He loves you so much. So do that. Open the door of your heart. Uh, you have a responsibility of this. It's just to respond. That's all. Jesus has done everything. He's, he's sacrificed himself. He's given himself completely for you, for your salvation, for your family's salvation, for your neighbor's salvation, for all mankind's salvation. All we have to do, our only duty here is to respond to the love of God. The love of God is extended to you like a, like a father reaching out to a child running up and, he's, and, and we can be forgiven of our sins and we can be right with God and we can run into that embrace of God, not having to run away from it. God is for you today, not against you. Open the door of your life, give your heart to Christ, ask for forgiveness. He will forgive, he will restore, he will fill you with the Holy Spirit and give you the strength to walk and you will see this Holy Week in a newness of life. Have a great and wonderful day today. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn to stop striving and start living. Bible teacher and author Kyle Winkler encourages you to live victoriously in Christ by teaching you to strive less, stress less, and sin less. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.